yang kena dialisis, yang cuci buah pinggang tu, eh, budak-budak muda. Okay, so uh, love your kidney. Okay, <laughs> that's the conclusion. So the produce urine by refining your uh, filtrate. So what are the function? Okay, kita ada empat ni, uh, the main four processes that happen in your nephron. Okay, nephron is the, macam awal sangat pula, okay. I think I'm going to skip this one first quote. Kita tengok yang the excretory system for other organism. Okay, kita ada protonephridia, kita ada metanephridia, Murphy gene tube and also our kidney. Okay, so we look at that they have many different kind of organism have different kind of excretory system. Okay, tak semua haiwan ada macam ni. Okay, okay, so. Let's see the protonephridia, right? Or we call it a flame bulb system. Okay, so it's found in the flatworm. It's another word for the planaria. Planaria is the like more like a scientific term for the flatworm lah. Eh? Flatworm tu biasanya tu jumpa. Uh, it can be found in the ocean water. Okay, the uh, network of dead end tubule lacking of internal opening. Dead end maknanya kalau kita tu macam bersambung lah, like our blood, the blood system ataupun blood capillary ataupun blood vessels are connect, uh, continuous kan, tak ada penghujungnya. But for this one, they have dead end over here. Eh, Lacking internal openings, eh? tak ada pembukaan mana-mana. So, the tubules branch throughout the body and the smallest branches are kept by a cellular unit called as a flame bulb. Okay, why no need lah to know. These tubules excrete the dilute fluid and also function in osmoregulation. Okay, they just have to make sure that the uh, osmotic pressure is going to be the same between their punya internal body and their punya uh, environment. Okay, so inilah dia. Alright, this is the flame bulb. Alright, um, this is the capsule, cilia and all. Okay, you don't need to, I mean like, know how to draw the flame bulb and all. Okay, we are not in biodiversity punya uh, topic ataupun we are not in marine science punya course but uh, I think it's enough for you to know that uh, what kind of organisms and what apa tu, what kind of excretory system dia ada. Okay, that's, that should be fine. Okay. Tak adalah essay kata, okay, draw the protonephridia flame bulb system ni lah, okay. Okay, metanephridia. So, this is on earthworm. Okay, earthworm is like cacing tanah lah. Eh, so, dia punya kidney tu is a bit different over here. They consist of open-ended tubule. Eh, tadi close kan? Dead end kan? Ha, this is open-ended pula. That collects silamic fluid directly and produce dilute urine for excretion. Okay, they collect silamic fluid directly. Maknanya silamic tu adalah dia punya cecair badan dia. And they're going to collect directly. Terus they produce dia punya urine. Dia punya air kencing dia. And it's really diluted. Okay, so it present in each segment of the worm. So kan kita, uh, apa tu, the earthworm is a segmented kan. But if you look at uh, the flatworm, they don't have segments. Yeah, they don't have segments. Okay, but for the flatworm, they have segments and every segments uh, they have the 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 component of the metanephridium which is responsible to produce the urea okay so next one uh, for the grasshopper ataupun most of the arthropod arthropod is actually the insects lah, eh, the terrestrial insect okay so for them they have a fusion tube all right they remove the nitrogenous waste from hemolymph Okay, since we already learn, we have the basic idea of the the, the grasshopper and most of the uh, apa tu, the the insects they do not have any blood. Instead, we call them as a hemolymph. Even though they do not have any blood, but they still need some uh, liquid ataupun ialah cecair dalam badan to transport dia punya waste, dia punya nutrient, dia punya oxygen and all, right? So this hemolymph is um, involved in the production of the punya apa tu the punya nitrogenous waste okay they are going to produce a relatively dry waste matter they are they are terrestrial okay they don't really need a lot of water okay so the punya waste matter is going to be dry as well lah. so it's a really important adaptation for the punya terrestrial life okay not have uh, for apa tu for living in a lack of water punya environment 
Okay, so basically this is the Norwegian tube lah. Tahu tu je lah rupa dia. Eh, the, the, I mean like the grasshopper and Norwegian tube. That's all. Okay, jangan pening-pening tengok uh, dia punya. Oh, that's the feces. Okay, <laughs> no need, no need. Okay, jangan pening-pening kepala. Alright, then now this is the kidney. Okay, so the kidney, the excretory organ of vertebrate is function both excretion and also the osmoregulation. Okay, the mammalian excretory system centers on fat kidney. We have one, we have two pair. Okay, which are also principal side of water balance and also salt regulation. Okay, let's see what's the structure of the kidney. It consists of tubule. Okay, what is a tubule? Tubule tu adalah tempat saluran sebelum terhasilnya air kencing. Once you already filter your punya blood, it's going to enter your tubule. And along the tubule, okay, it is surrounded by the blood capillary. Alright, and then you see, it's supplied with the blood by renal artery, which is uh, oxygenated blood. And then drained by a renal vein, which is deoxygenated blood. Urine exits at each kidney through a duct called the ureter. Okay, this one. So when everything has been filtered out, okay, the pedarah semua tu is gonna uh, enter the urinary bladder through the ureter. Okay, and then the both we have two ureters over here, drain everything into your urinary bladder, and then finally you wanna go to the toilet. The uretra is responsible to release the urine okay so let's see the structure of a kidney the mammalian kidney has two distinct region okay this is important all right kita ada renal cortex and also the inner renal medulla okay oh it's so sensitive this thing okay so that is the renal medulla this is the cortex okay so the cortex are uh, later i tell you Okay, so the structure of the kidney, eh? So outer renal cortex over here, okay, so this is the renal cortex, this is the medulla, this is the artery, the vein, maknanya this is the one uh, the blood comes in, everything, cellular respiration ha uh, happen and all, they dah keluar balik into, uh, through the renal vein, the deoxygenated blood, okay, and then... Um, when everything has been filtered, eh, the blood, you hasilkan air kencing, itu yang keluar melalui ureter. Okay, the outer renal cortex and inner renal, renal medulla is supplied with blood, okay, renal artery drained by vein. In the cortex and medulla, okay, cortex, medulla, if you see there's a distinctive punya coloration over here, kan? medulla tu lebih dalam and the color is going to be a bit darker. Okay, there's a reason of uh, about that one. Okay, um, and tightly packed with the excretory tubule and also the blood vessel. Okay, maknanya kat situ lah where your punya urine is formed. Excretory tubule, okay, is going to carry and process the filtrate produced by the blood entering the kidney. Eh, itu dia. And then all free infiltrate reabsorb into the blood vessels exits kidney in the renal vein. Eh? All fluid infiltrate which is reabsorbed into the blood. Why it need to be reabsorbed? Because those things are considered as um, what we call it um, useful to your body. Kita tak naklah buang dia sebagai air kencing kan? Sayang, kita penat-penat makan macam-macam atau buang macam tu je sebagai air kencing. So, we do not we do not want that. So, we need to reabsorb them. Okay, itu yang kita panggil reabsorption into your blood. Okay, so it's going to circulate back into your body because it is needed by your body. For example, the glucose. The glucose is needed for your punya cell, cellular respiration. The amino acid, okay, also need to be reabsorbed back into your blood because uh, it is required uh, to produce your punya enzymes, hormone. Okay, so what took the protein which needs from your uh, from your amino acid. So everything those um, useful stuff needs to be reabsorbed back into your blood. Eh? So bila dia dah reabsorb, darah yang masuk yang keluar tu itu yang kita panggil exit the kidney through the renal vein. And it's already blue in color because it's already uh, happening the cellular respiration. Eh? So the remaining fluid leaving the secretory tubule as urine is going to be collected in the inner renal pelvis. Eh, the inner renal pelvis. So, exits kidney via ureter. Alright. Okay. Again, uh, we have the 
renal part. Okay. So there are approximately five to eighteen striated triangular structure due to many straight tubules and blood vessels within the renal pyramid. Eh, ingat cortex tu yang luar tu. The renal part, okay, they have a straight tubules, banyak garisan-garisan macam tu. Eh, and also there's a lot of blood vessels. So the renal pelvis pula over here. Eh, just imagine this is your palm. Okay, the pelvis is over here. Okay, the funnel shaped basin that is going to receive your urine selepas semua benda kat sini-sini tu berlakunya filtration of your blood. You already produce the final product of your urine. Everything is going to be drained into your renal pelvis over here. Eh, lepas tu melalui ureter and then pergi kepada pudi kencing. Okay. So, let's see. Nephron. Okay, kidney nephron are the functional unit of the kidney. It's the functional unit. Nama pun unit, I mean the, the, the most basic unit di mana berlakunya penghasilan air kencing. If you talk about the functional unit of the cellular, uh, not cellular, uh, functional unit of the gas exchange, okay, ataupun your lungs, it should be the alveoli. Okay, so but for the kidney, it should be the nephron. So there are approximately a million nephron within each kidney. I can imagine that a million, okay, so... 85% of uh, should be the cortical nephron. Kalau you tengok kat sini, this is the cortical. Okay, they are like, the nephron is like half of it. Okay, uh, like most of it is at the cortex punya region, right? Especially the punya loop of Henle over here. Oh, sorry, but the loop of Henle is already in the medulla. Okay, that is what we call as the cortical nephron. Okay, they reach short distance to medulla, only short distance. Okay, but for the another 15%, we call it as a juxtamedullary nephron. Okay, where the loop of honey is going to extend it even deeper into the medulla. There's a reason about that one also. Okay, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you later. Okay, so important for urine production, orang cakap dah, <laughs> which is hypoosmotic to body fluid. So it's a key adaptation for water conservation in mammal. Ah, okay, so... Maknanya, um, if you're having a deeper juxtamedullary nephron over here, okay, more water will be reabsorbed into your body. Eh, lagi banyak water will be reabsorbed. Sebab sini, I'm, I'm sure you already learn, right, during SPM, macam-macam-macam. Okay, the water will diffuse out, kan? Everything is going to be reabsorbed into your blood. So, you, you can conserve uh, more water. Okay, so, but for... Uh, animals that may be living in an aquatic environment like the fishes and all, all, they don't need to have a uh, really long juxtamedullary lah. They just need to uh, really short because they are living in aquatic environment. No problem. I can have water 24-7. Okay, so yang need to conserve tu macam unta ke uh, apa lagi? Any, any animals that live in a desert ke, okay, they need to conserve water so they need a, a longer loop of handling ataupun namanya juxtamedullary nephron okay, ingat tu, pernah tanya tu <laughs> I've asked that question before in final, okay barulah nak tulis, ya, apa yang tadi eh? okay, tahu sangat okay, the nephron organization so each nephron contain the single long tubule, okay uh, so, this is the organization. Okay, kita kena tahulah kat mana dia proximal tubule, the loop of handy, the distal tubule, uh, where's the glomerul rules. Okay, uh, okay. each nephron has this blood vessel. Okay, the renal artery, which I already said just now, bringing the oxygenated blood to your kidney. Okay, and afferent arteriole, afferent and yang masuk, yang first one, the one that enters, eh, efferent arterial, forming the glomerulus, uh, eh, I think dia ada perkataan ni, inside the cavity of the Bowman capsule. Okay, so the Bowman capsule is like a mangkuk tu, a bowl. Inside of it is the glomerulus, which is a, uh, a clump ataupun gumpalan um, saluran darah. Okay, the punya artery is already, everything is inside the bowl. Alright, itu kita panggil sebagai glomerulus. So, the capillary of glomerulus then join to form an efferent. So, the one that comes out, okay, itu kita panggil sebagai efferent arteriol. 
eh masuk efferent keluar efferent and it's blue color because it's already deoxygenated meaning everything that happen in the glomerulus to cellular respiration also happening eh so branches from the efferent arterial forming a network of peritubular capillary which surround the proximal and also the distal maksudnya okay over the proximal and the distal over here it is surrounded by a lot of blood capillary that is really important for the secretion process and also for the um, reabsorption process to happen okay so um, other branches extend downward to form the vasa recta ataupun it, it looks like a hairpin shaped capillary that serve renal medulla including the loop of Henle. Eh, vasa recta tu adalah nama blood vessels okay that surrounding the the, the loop of Henle. Okay, sebab uh, kalau I, I mean the whole nephron tu mesti ada blood capillary lah because as I said for the secretion and the reabsorption to happen eh? and it is close to each other so process penyerapan dan resapan ya eh? benda tu uh, reabsorption and also the secretion have a uh, process to happen it can be happen like really quickly and fast easily tak payahlah nak travel jauh untuk benda tu berlaku eh? it's going to be really quick so that's why it is like surrounded okay and the tubal is surrounded by the blood vessels Okay, um, I'm going to look back at the previous ni tadi tu eh. So, um, this is the first one which is the glomerulus is uh, in the cup of uh, Bowman capsule. Okay, I'm going to talk about the water functions. So, the cells, the protein, large molecules cannot cross the epithelial membrane. So, they're going to remain in the body fluid. Okay, ni yang kami yang masuk tadi tu kan. Okay, this is the afferin. Okay. Which, which is your blood entering the Bowman capsule. Okay, so over here there will be filtration happening. I'm going to talk about it in more detail later. Okay, so yang benda yang besar-besar tu, okay, the larger component cannot be diffused out because the, the, the what they call the, the lumen is too small for them to diffuse out. And so the, the three things, okay, is the plasma, the plasma protein, Uh, the platelet and also the red blood cells okay these three uh, stuff is going to diffuse out they like, bukanlah diffuse they're going to like remain in your blood and then keluar balik through the efferent arteriole okay that's why these three things should not be in your filtrate and also should not be in your urine okay because it's too large kalau ada something wrong with your kidney okay eh? So in contrast, water and small molecule like the salts, ke, okay, all those ion, sugar, amino acids, glucose, fructose, semua tu, it can cross the membrane for a solution. Itu kita bagi sebagai filtrate. Maksudnya bahan-bahan yang boleh melalui, okay, into the tubule, okay, ataupun excretory tubule, we call as a filtrate. We don't call them as a blood because you already filter it out, right? So we call it as a filtrate. Okay, and we cannot call them as urine as well because dia tak keluar lagi sebagai air kencing. Kita tak proseskan dia lagi because there are certain things need to be reabsorbed, certain things need to be excreted out. Eh? So, we we still need to call it as a filtrate. Eh? So, recover useful molecule, especially the glucose for your cellular respiration, the salts for your punya osmoregulation process, um, ataupun the osmotic balance in your blood, the vitamins, eh, the hormone, amino acid, uh, okay, for your protein, you punya, as I said, uh, for your, the other uh, ribosome needs the amino acid to produce all the protein, uh, okay, so, and water from the filtrate, and it's going to return them to the body fluid or to your blood, eh, so ini perlu, diperlukan balik dalam badan tu, kita tak nak buang dia sebab air kencing, it's going to be reabsorbed back, eh, and the non-important solids and waste, especially the toxin, we don't need them, Excess ion, okay, too much ion is going to disrupt your blood pH as well. Okay, is going to be extracted out from your body fluid eh, through active transport. Okay, remember this as normally again for the any kind of ion ataupun um, salts, mineral salts doesn't matter in your body, okay, in human body ataupun in plants, uh, they are going to involve active transport, meaning from lower concentration entering the higher concentration and it needs ATP to to happen yeah? and added to the content of the excretory tubule 
and then the filtrate that is going to leave the system, uh, le meaning is leaving the kidney. Now you're calling it as a urine. Okay, so that is the difference. Okay, so think about that. Reabsorb important molecules like the glucose and all will be reabsorbed into your blood system. Okay, and it can be, it, it, it may be active transport, it may be like passive transport, it can be osmosis, depending on what kind of molecules you're talking about. Okay, and the same thing applies to the secretion. Eh? Awak cerita pasal apa? Kalau glucose, ya. Yeah. Glucose is active transport. Tak boleh lah, you cakap, oh, reabsorption must be passive transport only. No. Okay, if you're talking about glucose and amino acid, it must be active transport. Meaning, dalam darah ni, Okay, it's already high content of glucose. Kat sini kurang. But you still want it more. You still want to add the glu glucose into the blood. Okay, so it's going to involve active transport. Okay, so for this one also, um, depending. The, okay, we're going, to let's, we're going to see what are the uh, transportation involved. Okay. Alright, so... Okay, so okay, ni lah dia. Eh? So this is the efferent entering the glomerulus. Everything is going to be filtered out. We call it as a filtrate. Yang mana tak boleh tu kita keluar balik through the efferent. Okay. All right. So this is a really, I think this is a really um, useful, uh, a really good image. Okay, for you to refer. Okay, like what are the things happening along the nephron? Okay, so um, yeah, this is the first thing lah, eh? the uh, ultrafiltration, and then um, this is the proximal tubule where the reabsorption happen. Okay, going down, we call it the descending limb of loop of Henle, descending, menurun. Eh? Only the water will be reabsorbed, masuk ke dalam badan awak. Okay, and then it goes down, okay, kalau tengok cortex, outer medulla, inner medulla, dia sebenarnya makin masin, ataupun makin hypertonic. Eh, bila dia makin masin, maknanya you are creating different of gradient in terms of um, osmolarity. So, maknanya makin ke dalam, eh, makin makin daripada cortex ke inner medulla, bila dia makin masin, more water will be reabsorbed over here comparing to the over uh, uh, I, mean, I mean more water will be reabsorbed in the inner comparing to the outer medulla eh? because makin masin kat sini if there's a question what are the things that uh, contributes to the to the saltiness of the inner medulla over here lah uh, nampak tak when ascending naik pula okay there will be only the the, the sodium chloride ataupun ion of Ion sodium chloride will be reabsorbed, will be accumulated over here. Itu yang menyebabkan over here is really salt, salty. Eh? So, bila naik atas, reaching the distal tubule, this one is more on the secretion process. Okay, it's going to secrete it out. Maksudnya daripada darah masuk ke dalam tubule tu. Okay, but and then we have the collecting duct where that is the final phase where you're going to reabsorb, secrete, Nah, semua yang berlaku kat sini, the final. Okay, and then barulah you hasilkan the urine. Okay, so over here, dia dah tunjuk dah what are the things is going to involve active transport, what are the things is going to involve the passive transport. Yeah, so it's really good over here. Yeah? You boleh refer to this um, uh, diagram. Okay, but I'm going to focus on the ultra filtration first. Yeah? So the process of smaller molecule are filtered from the blood in the glomerulus into the Bowman capsule. Yeah? From the blood into the Bowman capsule over here. Efferent arterial punya diameter is way larger comparing to the efferent. Eh, yang masuk lebih besar and then yang keluar tu lebih kecil. So, they are creating a, a restriction ataupun rintangan yang besar kat situ. Okay, so causing a high pressure over there. But it's more on the high hydrostatic pressure lah because you're involving blood which is a liquid, right? So there will be a high hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus capillary. Okay, so when the pressure is high, they are forcing all the molecules to filter out, to push out. Okay, masuk ke dalam bumin capsule over here. 
Okay, forcing the fluid from the glomerular capillary entering the Bowman capsule. Okay, so the cells in the Bowman capsules that wraps around the capillary called the porocyte, and they have slits. Okay? They have filtration slit. They macam ada lubang-lubang ataupun liang-liang, which increasing the rate of filtration. Eh, tanpa ada slit tu, susahlah dia nak filter out, right? So, by having the podocyte, increasing the rate of filtration. Okay, I'm sure the podocyte is something new that you haven't heard before, but yeah, you should take note on that one, okay? So, what are the things that can pass through? First, of course, lah, water, because the water molecule is really small. The ions, which is the sodium chloride, glucose, the basic unit of, of sugar, of course, it can pass through all the ions over here. Urea, amino acid, drugs, and also poison. Eh, itu yang first thing it can pass through. Okay, so what is retained in the blood? Okay, tak cukup ni sebenarnya plasma protein, the red blood cells, and also the platelet. Eh, you can add on lah. So the filtrate is formed in the lumen of Bowman capsule over here. Eh, so this is how it looks like: the efferent entering the glomerulus, going up the efferent. Eh. Um, this is the filtration slit over here. Eh? Dia macam uh, bukan lubang tau. It's like a slit macam panjang-panjang macam tu. Eh? It's a slit that uh, increasing the rate of filtration. Okay, so this is how it looks like. The efferent and efferent. Okay, and then you are having the glomerular filtrate containing all the molecules that can pass through. Eh? And then they akan pergi ke proximal tubuh. Okay. Now, we are entering the selective reabsorption. Nama pun selective meaning they gonna reabsorb certain kind of stuff only. Not all. Eh? So, the certain substances are selectively reabsorbed from the filtrate into the cells of proximal tubuh. Eh? Aku kenapa panggil proximal? Kenapa yang tu distal? Why, 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 what's the difference? Eh? So, it's easy. Mana eh? Uh, okay, why is it called proximal? Because it's in proximity. Proximity kan dekat maksudnya kan? So, there's a proximal, there's a proximity uh, from the glomerulus ataupun the Bowman capsule. Why is it called as a distal? Because in distant, lebih jauh. So, that's why it called as a distal tubule. Okay, so back to this one. Okay, reabsorb from the filtrate into the cells of proximal tubule into the capillary network of nephron, then carried away from the kidney. Eh, kita nak benda-benda tu. So, sebab tu dia kata carry it away from the kidney through the blood capillary. Right? So, the critical for the recapture of ion, water and also the valuable nutrient. Almost 80% of the nutrient, uh, almost 80% of the filtrate will be reabsorbed. Okay? So, what are the things is going to be reabsorbed? The glucose, 100%. Tak ada yang tinggal. Eh? Amino acid, hormone. 80% should be the ions and water some of the potassium ion and also urea. Okay, so um, this is what happened lah. Apa yang apa yang akan diserap semula dalam darah. Okay, especially the ions, water, glucose, hormones. Don't forget about hormones. Eh, itu semua diperlukan oleh badan awak. So kita tak naklah membazir sebagai air kencing saja. Okay. And then we have the selective reabsorption. Eh, so the same thing, still selective reabsorption. Eh? Okay, small protein molecules are transported by pinocytosis. Okay, they are digested into acid, amino acid. And when the lysosome fuses in the pinocytotic vesicle, eh, they are going to form the vesicle and then they are going to diffuse out from the cell. Okay, so other substances by active or the passive transport into the cytoplasm of the cell. Substances then move into the basement channel across the basement membrane. Eh, basement? Is it? I think the basement membrane into the blood capillary. Uh, okay, through the active or the passive transport. Okay, so over here is going to show you lah what are the things. Eh? Carried away by blood producing concentration gradient inside and outside tubule. Okay, so over here, uh, this is your fluid. Eh? Your tubular fluid. Maknanya, Uh, yang your, your filtrate tu yang sebelum dijadikan sebagai air kencing tu eh? so this is your punya epithelial cells ataupun the layer of cells the outermost layer cells yang um, before entering the blood okay so alright so this is the tubular fluid and then there will be a lot of substances yang terlepas daripada 
uh, ultra filtration process tadi okay you have the water lah protein and all right okay and also the vitamins um, amino acid so everything is going to be through the epithelial cells of the proximal convoluted tubule first okay and then you see over here kalau water tu boleh je lah directly menyelit-nyelit kat situ apa yang ada liang-liang tu they just go through okay but for certain kind of stuff like vitamins ke apa ke uh, they need like active transport eh dia dah tunjuk some you see the, normally the sodium ion is need through active transport facilitated diffusion eh it needs to be it needs uh, apa tu uh, apa tu protein channel okay to to help them to to be transported to other other region all right and then the simple diffusion okay uh, kalau sini siapa simple diffusion uh, the water the sodium all right and no sodium why is it sodium in the simple diffusion eh? mm, the membrane channel or they have a membrane channel okay it depends on if there's a membrane channel for the sodium they can just pass through okay through simple diffusion kalau tak ada membrane channel tu they have to pass through using active transport okay so that's the difference but jangan pening pala i want you to focus that or normally the ion is normally going to be transported through active transport Okay, so that's all. I think don't don't really focus on this one lah. I pun tak tahu lah kenapa dia letak benda ni. Okay, and then the special adaptation of the proximal convoluted. Okay, what we already see the uh, adaptation of the ultra filtration kan. Ada uh, filtration slits, ada uh, porous size and all. Okay, hydrostatic pressures and all. Okay, so now is the proximal. Okay, where the reabsorption happen. So the microvilli, okay, is going to increase the surface area per volume. Okay. Ingat balik kan, the microvilli which you can find it in the in the virus ataupun the digestion system. Okay, they have it there as well. And then the pinocytotic groove which is a small inlet at the base of microvilli enable the pinocytosis. Eh? So, over here ni yang uh, berlaku dengan pinocytosis over here. Eh? Nampak kat mana ada this one. Okay, they help them to pass through. Through the pinocytosis. Dia masuk dalam vesicle to help them to pass through. Okay, and then Um, and then the space between the tubule cells also enable the easy pass passage of the substances. Eh, there will be space over here. Ni yang katanya, the spaces. Okay, easy for certain. If it's small enough, they can just pass through. Okay, and then they have a basal channel, spaces between cells and the basement, basement membrane. Okay, abundance of mitochondria is needed, especially if you are involving the active transport. Okay, so... This is the pinocytosis lah. Eh, macam mana awak nak, dia tak, dia tak boleh go through um, directly to the epithelial cells. Maybe of dia punya, dia punya keadaan ataupun dia punya size dia yang terlalu besar. Okay, and then, so no problem, they can pass through through the pinocytosis. Dia masuk je. Okay, and then they can pass through to the other side, masuk dalam darah tu. Okay, so these are the We call that the special adaptation that can be found in the proximal. Okay. And then reabsorption of water. Okay. Still, I believe, okay, when we talk about reabsorption of water, yes, it does happen at the proximal. Tapi ada juga berlaku dekat loop of Henley. The major part is the loop of Henley. Eh? Kita panggil counter current multiplier system in the loop of Henley. I'm sure you heard about counter current yang kita dah belajar kaki itik semua tu. <laughs> counter current gas exchange tu alright but yeah you know well, kidney pun ada juga sebenarnya okay so because they are moving in the opposite way that's why we call it as a counter current eh? energy is used in active transport to help exchange of material and generate concentration gradient eh? generate concentration gradient dia ada gradient ataupun kepekatan yang berbeza daripada atas sampai yang lah ke bawah eh Water is going to move across the membrane of descending. Yeah? Yang turun ke bawah, only water will be allowed to reabsorb. Okay, if you wonder, eh, macam mana eh? Dia benda yang sama. Tetapi kenapa water je yang boleh masuk keluar? But, not, but, but why over here, um, only the salt is allowed to diffuse out? Okay, so that is involving the aquaporin. Pernah dengar tak? Aquaporin, eh? You, you can search it. AQA. Uh, A Q U A P O R I N, 
it's a is a is a lumen atau not lumen ada macam liang-liang ada pada pada dinding loop of Henley dia hanya ada pada descending saja okey nama pun aquaporin so they only allow the water to pass through to diffuse out ah uh, okey so dekat ascending tu there will be no any aquaporin so walaupun keadaannya still salty Meaning, oh, okay, water still can diffuse out, right? Kenapa sini je? Because over here, there's no aquaporin. Uh, as easy as that, right? So, water is going to move across the membrane, passively transport through osmosis. Osmosis memanglah passive transport, kan? Lah? Okay, but there will be no channel for the sodium chloride to pass through. Dekat sini pula, if you wonder, eh, apa sal, eh? Uh, there's no any uh, sodium chloride to pass through over here. Kenapa sini je dibenarkan? Because there's no channel for them to pass through. Uh, they don't have the 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 protein channel, okay? The sodium chloride channel to allow them to pass through, okay? It's not permeable, so it cannot diffuse out in the descending arm. It's transported out actively at the ascending arm. Okay? Accumulation of sodium chloride in the loop, more water to be reabsorbed, little urine is produced, okay? So antara um, one of the things that contributed to the saltiness of the inner medulla over here is the salt over here, salt, and also the urea. Uh, dekat bawah sini, in the collecting duct, we are not entering that part yet, but I just want to say, okay, yang menyebab you are that contributing uh, to the hyperosmotic region over here, okay, is the urea as well, and also the sodium chloride. Ini yang paling major lah. Eh, sebab ini yang paling actively happen over here because urea taklah banyak nak keluar because most of the urea is going to be excreted out as a urine, right? Ah, ni cuma contributing to the saltiness of the medulla. Eh, if the question asks you why you are increasing the hyperosmotic, because we want to make sure all the water can pass out over here through simple diffusion, uh, not simple diffusion, through the osmosis process. From higher water potential to lower water potential. Sebab sini, when it is really hyper, uh, hypertonic solution, not solution, sorry, hyperosmotic, meaning is lack of water, sangat lama sin, dalam sini pula is higher water potential, so you are creating difference in water gradient, so you are forcing the water from the tubule, from the filtrate, diffuse out, okay, into the inner medulla, okay. So, kalau tengok kat sini kan, uh, this one is a good diagram as well. Okay, tengok tak? This is the osmolality of the interstitial fluid. Daripada cortex sampai ke medulla, okay, it's increasing from 300 to 1200. Okay, so over here, you see all the water is going to diffuse out. Okay? Fitrate entering the nephron loop is isoosmotic. This is iso. Okay, so tak adalah air keluar because they are the same in terms of the punya osmolality. Okay, tapi makin dia ke bawah, water is going to move out the filtrate in the descending limb down its osmotic gradient, concentrating the filtrate. Eh, makin pekat. Sebab makin banyak air keluar, you punya air kencing, sorry, I cannot call it as air kencing, you I call it, the punya filtrate is going to be so pekat over here, so concentrated because all water has come out. Okay, so the filtrate reaches its highest concentration at the band of loop. So, ni paling tinggi, you see, 1200. It's really high. So, over here, sepatutnya hanya tinggal uh, garam saja. Okay, and then once it goes up at the ascending block, okay, it's going to be, tengok, nampak tak? It's going to be 700, 400, 200, eh? All the um, sodium and chloride punya ion are pumped out of the filtrate increases the interstitial fluid osmolality. Okay, dia meningkat balik. Alright, and then filtrate is as most dilute as it leaves the nephron loop at 100 milli osmolality hypoosmotic to the interstitial fluid. Okay, so it's going to be 100 all the way round. Okay, because kat sini dia dah tak ada dah perbezaan dari segi um, osmolality. Only the medulla part. Eh? So that's why um, ada sebabnya tadi you see the awal-awal tadi gambar kidney tu kan yang warna merah tu because of the high content of salt and also the urea okay which is going to contribute to the osmosis process okay eh? um, ni tak payah kot boleh tak tak payah okay 
it's already 10 okay give me a break and i'm sure you guys need a break as well okay so i'm gonna say like seven minutes lah okay later we continue and uh okay tunggu, eh? stay tuned thank you
Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm back. Hey, guys, may I know that if you guys are involved with tomorrow punya event, are you guys need to attend the event? Tak tahu eh. Don't know, don't care. Eh? Okay, I like that. Tak, tak ada yang tahu ke? Are you guys involved? Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Okay, thank you for for responding. Okay, but um, I, I'm not sure if you guys know, but tomorrow I'm going to give a recorded lecture. Oh, yes. Recorded lecture on on tomorrow yang tak ada class. Yes, because I'm not available in UKM, so I, I will give a recorded lecture on the muscle and nervous system. It's a really lengthy punya um, punya 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 lecture. Actually, I prefer to give in at least uh, on physical ke, tapi um, tak mengizinkan. Okay, you can try to refer and you can also try to refer YouTube punya 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 videos. Eh? It's going to be a, a really helpful for your understanding. Eh, hey, dia punya images, you can see what actually happen, eh, especially on the muscle punya contraction tu, okay. So, uh, kita ada a few more, okay, and then, sekejap eh. Oh, okay, <laughs> tengok berapa slide yang tinggal, eh, oh terkeluar. Sekejap eh, okay. Alright, okay. Lepas ni boleh lunch kan? Lunch ke sepuluh eh. Okay now um, Let's see Okay we done with the reabsorption Now we look at the secretion Nama pun secret Meaning everything is in the blood Needs to be secreted out into the fetrit And then you want to Leave your body lah Through your punya eye kencing tu Okay so substances are actively transferred Into capillary around the nephron And then to the glomerular fetrit Okay, so it's going to control the punya blood pH. So it's going to balance between the secretion of hydrogen ion and also the reabsorption, okay, of the acid carbonate. So benda-benda ni semua memainkan peranan dalam in balancing out your punya p, uh, p, blood pH. Okay, so it happens actively in the proximal convoluted tubule occurring in other parts of the nephron, including the distal and also the collecting duct. Okay. Substances that involve is going to be nitrogenous waste, which is your punya urea, dia punya ammonia, uric acid, and also the creatine. Nah, itu semua yang ada NH group, nitrogen group, tu, okay? And then the ion involved is especially hydrogen, eh? Sebab uh, so, dia nak balance out your punya pH balance. We don't want it to be too acidic, ataupun we don't want it to be too alkali. Okay, so it's going to be balanced out, and then drugs and also all the foreign substances. Eh, drugs tu, not drugs tu as I said, bukanlah drugs yang yang narkotiknya tu, it's like you you having you you eat your Panadol ke ubat sesama ke, those, those are considered drugs as well, eh, and it needs to be secreted out from your body eh. so kalau tengok kat sini um, this is the proximal, ok kita dah settle proximal, we are going to look at this, uh, apa tu at the distal over here So, there are regulated reabsorption. Eh, masih ada reabsorption happen but not really that much lah. Mana yang tertinggal tu eh. So, the sodium and also the chlor, uh, chlorine punya ion and also the calcium semua tu. But, nampak tak? Adanya aldosterone and also some of the hormone. Maknanya reabsorption happen over here is depending on the hormone. Eh, kalau the hormone barulah the reabsorption happen over here. Okay, and the secretion over here pun ada juga, uh, okay, so aldosterone, yeah. so is regulated secretion of potassium ion will be secreted out over here, yang paling banyak, banyak uh, kat sini adalah the hydrogen ion, yeah. sebab kita tahu kalau terlalu tinggi hydrogen in your blood, is going to make it too acidic, yeah. it's going to be affected you punya all, you punya your body system, we don't want that, we need to get it up, okay, so it's going to be secreted out into the filtrate, okay, and then uh, ini adalah collecting duct okay so this one lah eh, we are com uh, we are focusing on this one because we are talking about secretion in the distal convoluted tubule eh? tapi you can ingat uh -huh, you can ingat uh, when we are talking about ADH hormone pula 
ADH meaning bila ADH tu akan dihasilkan? When you are exercising, when your lack of drinking water that day, okay, kurang minum air, and then if you're eating a lot of salty food, eh, teringin pula makan apa tu, uh, keropok apa yang masing-masing tu eh, not the super ring, what is it ah? Uh? Macam-macam uh, lah eh, yang masing-masing tu, the potato chips and all, which is really high in salt. Okay, you're exercising, you're drink, you're not, your lack of water that day, you drink, you don't drink too much, ataupun you're fasting that day. And these are the conditions that is going to trigger the production of ADH. Eh, the ADH tu pula, dia akan pergi eh, kepada distal convoluted tubule and also the, the collecting duct. Di mana itu yang akan menyebabkan reabsorption process to happen. Eh, reabsorption of what? Water lah. Uh, because because itu adalah faktor-faktor ataupun situasi di mana menyebabkan badan awak kekurangan air. Awak makan banyak garam, awak tak minum air, awak tak uh, awak berpuasa ataupun you are exercising. Eh, benda you are making your body dehydrated. But we don't want to further dehydrate you punya body by uh, secreting a lot of urine. Kita nak simpan banyak air. So the reabsorption is going to happen at this two part. Eh, the distal convoluted tubule and also the collecting duct. Uh, itulah sat, salah satu situasi reabsorption is going to happen. Eh, itu yang saya cakap. Reabsorption happen is depending on your body situation and also hormone. Eh, if ADH is produced, reabsorption is going to happen inside the distal. Tapi if you are okay, minum cukup air, tak ada apa-apa yang perlu di reabsorb, secretion is happening over here. Eh? So, uh, still the excretion is removing of the metabolic waste and filtrate is going to pass into collecting tubule ataupun duct, passes to the ureter, urinary bladder and uh, finally your, your uretra. Eh? So, the collecting duct still, uh, apa tu garam tu is going to be uh, apa tu reabsorb, eh? further increasing the osmolarity ataupun the hyperosmotic uh, sorry hyperosmolarity of the medulla. Eh? Kita nak makin dia bermasin kat sini, eh? kat sini. Also the urea also is going to make sure it's too salty over here, so easy for the loop of Henle, the descending part, water to diffuse out, eh? water to to reabsorb. Okay, so you see, it contributes to the high osmolarity in the interstitial fluid. All right. Hello. Hello, you. Uh, ada dapat imet tak berkenai perintah tangan semula tu? Kan anak niat tu. Okay. Okay, so next one, the from blood filtrate to urine. All right. So, inilah apa yang berlaku. Okay, the secretion you see over here. This is the filtration. But make sure kalau ada soalan, on this part, okay, um, don't use the word filtration, it's wrong. Eh? I want the word ultra filtration. Eh? You use the word filtration, not even half mark. Okay, so and then uh, over here, kita ada reabsorption. Eh? And then at the same time, ada secretion juga, but we are focusing more on reabsorption at the proximal tubule. Okay, turun bawah, there will be reabsorption of water. Ascending, reabsorption of the sodium chloride ion. Distal tubule pun ada dua, using reabsorption and also secretion depending on the situation of your body. Okay, and then the same thing happen at the collecting duct as, as well. Okay, and then finally, this is the excretion. Okay, so you have to be really clear each part tu, apakah nama proses tu, apakah antara bahan yang di, diserap ke, dikeluarkan ke, eh? And then I think one of the most important um, uh, things that you have to focus on is the punya, uh, mode of transportation. Is it active transport ataupun is it passive osmosis and all? Uh, you have to be really, really clear on that part. Okay. Okay, so this is the one I told you. Uh, what are the hormones that is involved in the kidney? Okay, the osmolarity of the urine is regulated by your punya nervous system, okay, your punya your brain and all, and also the hormonal. Hormonal control of water and salt reabsorption in the kidney. So, what are the two hormones that is involved, okay, it's, which is the antidiuretic hormone ataupun kita panggil ADH, 
In other word, it can be vasopressin. Yeah? Kalau you nampak perkataan vasopressin, kau cakap, alamak, benda ni. <laughs> it's actually ADH je. Okay? And then it's another one is the aldosterone. Okay. Alright, so the decrease in water potential, remember, you are decreasing the water potential, meaning you, you are sweating too much because you are exercising, eh, uh, the, the high salt content in your food, okay, and then these are the things is going to trigger, okay, is going to decrease your punya water potential, and then the osmo receptor in your hypothalamus is going to detect the changes and is going to create an impulse, okay, the electrical impulse. So the impulse is going to be sent to the pituitary gland, okay, releasing the ADH, okay, the hormone, vasopressin, okay, and then increasing the permeability of the distal tubule and collecting duct of water. Remember, increasing the permeability, meningkatkan allowability, uh, kebenaran untuk water to diffuse out. Yeah, sebab kita kita nak reabsorb a lot of water because these are the things that uh, makes your body dehydrated. Yeah, so it decreases the permeability of water at the distal and also collecting duct. So a lot of water will be reabsorbed, reducing the urine volume. Okay, so uh, these are the things you have to mention. Yeah. Remember, sama juga yang I uh, ajar pasal apa tu osmoregulation about the fish punya urine kan. Yeah. If let's see this kind of question to come out, then don't forget about the urine production. Uh, okay, you have to say uh, the urine production is going to be really dilute. Uh, sorry, really concentrated and less volume. Itu the final. Uh, tak boleh lah. You cerita sembang, sembang kencang, tapi produk dia tak tahu macam mana sebenarnya. Ah, uh, you have to tell. Which senang je. Kalau you kurang minum air, air kencing mesti lah pekat dan sikit kan, uh, tak, tak pandai dia fikir oh banyak reabsorb uh, dia jadi sikit ke banyak ke ataupun kosa, tak payah <laughs> you, you just tahu you kurang minum air air kencing dihasilkan adalah sikit dan concentrated you minum air banyak, obviously you gonna go to the toilet a lot of time frequently sebab you producing a lot of water and it's really diluted uh, ok, so make sure these are the stuff that you have to focus on. Eh? So, itulah ADH. Eh? Increasing the permeability itu penting. Okay, increasing the permeability of um, at the distal tubule and also the collecting duct. Okay, and then uh, this one also also important. Okay, but it's not really that hard. Okay, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system ataupun kita panggil sebagai RAS. Ini lebih berkaitan dengan sodium ataupun garam. Tadi tu air ni garam. Eh? So, when the blood sodium decreases, uh, okay, it's going to stimulate the juxtaglomerular complex found between 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 efferent arterial and also distal convoluted tubule to produce the renin. Uh, okay. Nampak, nampak tak ni? Okay, over here. The juxta, uh, juxtaglomerular apparatus which is a blood capillary tau. You janganlah fikir yang benda sebenarnya there is a blood capillary that is really close to the distal. Eh, distal tu kan yang tempat secretion tadi tu. Alright, and then the renin is going to convert the angiotensinogen into angiotensin. Nampak tak? Okay, if you I wonder where does it produce, siapa yang produce the angiotensinogen tu? The liver. Produce the angiotensinogen. Okay, and also the renin yang daripada yang dikeluarkan, yang dihasilkan daripada distal tadi tu, okay, is gonna uh, convert into angiotensinogen kepada angiotensin 1. Okay, and then we have the ACE. Okay, sorry, I, I forgot what's the ACE. I'm gonna get up. Is it a hormone? Um enzyme oh okay it's an enzyme okay so it's actually an enzyme um that is going to convert okay the angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 pula okay so finally you have the angiotensin 2 is going to stimulate the adrenal gland okay adrenal gland is so this located uh, your kidney over there is going to release the aldosterone okay when the release of aldosterone the arteriole is going to constrict Okay, making the arterial is going to constrict. Maknanya, you you are going to increase the pressure. 
then you're going to increase the blood pressure. So the pressure will be back to volume. Eh, will be back to normal normal pressure. Okay, so but you can ingat, when the sodium decreases, meaning you have a low blood pressure. Okay, if you're wondering apa yang menyebabkan low blood pressure tu, I think it's more on tak cukup makan, uh, tak cukup garam, okay, uh, atau makanan yang, yelah, diet pemakanan dia kurang garam, uh, and then uh, more on genetic as well, kan ada orang kan memang ada low blood pressure kan, uh, okay, tu pun dia juga, uh, blood loss also is going to contribute to the, to the, apa tu, the low blood pressure, so bila benda tu berlaku, itu yang menyebabkan stimulate the juxta glomerula and then uh, apa tu yang releasing the renin sekalikan dengan liver to produce the angiotensinogen converting ni one kepada two lah kepada ni semua tu okay and then finally you are producing the aldosterone which is going to back you punya uh, blood pressure into normal level okay so ingat yang tadi tu the ADH tu is um, when you are lack of water, when your body is dehydrated, this one is concerning of your upper blood pressure. Okay. Um, and okay, so aldosterone is going to increase the uptake of sodium in the small intestine. Yeah, so about kasi tu lah banyaknya um, digestion process happen. Okay, that is where the sodium ion is a lot. Okay, can be found in the small intestine. So aldosterone is going to trigger the absorption of the ataupun the uptake of sodium from the small intestine and is going to increase the sodium concentration in your blood increase the reabsorption of water okay to increase the blood pressure and all okay and then also increasing the secretion of potassium ion into the glomerular filtrate okay but i think it's um kalau ada ni soalan macam ni it's uh, focus on this one. What are the things? Okay, what are the hormones? What are enzymes involved? Okay, and then how it's gonna make sure you put your blood pressure back to normal. Okay, so and then also you can tell juga lah certain kind of um, substance yeah, macam alcohol, all those alcohol beverages, the coffee. Okay, macam mana? What are the product of urine? Is it gonna make your punya urine diluted or or is it gonna make you are is it going to make you pee a lot that day at the point you're gonna don't feel like go to toilet uh, if you think you you get oh yeah yeah i last time i uh, last night i drink a cup of uh, coffee and then i think i went to the toilet like 10 times per night <laughs> so kaitkanlah balik dengan increasing the permeability of the distal okay apa yang ada dalam dalam coffee tu yang menyebabkan you sentiasa nak buang air kecil Madangnya, we can say that the coffee, uh, the substances ataupun the ingredients, okay, in the coffee ataupun the alcoholic beverages yang menyebabkan uh, to decrease the permeability of distal tubule. Okay, dia tak nak serap air. Dia tak nak menyebabkan air tu diserap dalam badan awak. Instead, you, they want you to pee a lot. Okay, so sebab tu we said that... Uh, uh, bila kita berpuasa tak digalakkan bersahur air kopi eh sebab benda tu menyebabkan you dehydrated okay but uh, tu tu lah tu okay so i think that's all yes i am happy <coughs> all right so wait 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 uh, ha, wait ha. i have uh, macam biasa lah we do some quiz sikit kan, okay, for mana tahu, eh, last time the mid semester, I took some from the from the, apa tu from my quiz kan, nah, I'm trying to help you out <laughs> okay, so wait ah. Uh, how do I give, or to the respective lecturer lah, okay, I'm going to give the link to your lecturers, to your tutor sekejap eh. Um. Okay, siapa yang kalau lecturer tak sempat nak bagi tu, you can my set 5, 6 and 13, maybe you can send it to to the others as well. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. So I already uh, changed the punya format over here. Okay, so immediately. So, dia boleh terus tengok lah eh. Macam apa jawapan yang betul dia. Because sometimes I forgot to release the answer. Okay, but not that much pun soalan dia. Buatlah sikit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, 9 only eh. Okay, boleh lah. Okay. So guys, any questions that you want to ask me? Before you go to lunch. <laughs> no ah? Uh, okay, good. Oh, ni flame cell tu, I already open. Macam ni lah, I don't know like, if you can see it or not. Ingat tak? Ah, uh, The, apa tu? Flame cell in the planarian. Huh? Tak nampak apa pun. Okay, so, alright. Guys, thank you so much. Okay, uh, hopefully to see you on our last topic, which is the reproduction. Okay, tomorrow is recorded lecture. Okay, have a nice day, guys. Take care. Don't forget uh, to lunch. Bye-bye. <laughs>